Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. Uh, we made a trade today, obviously, uh, with Rangers. Uh, Recording in progress. Excited to have Pavel join our group. I uh, want to thank Sammy Blay for his uh, contributions to our organization over the last number of years. Wish him nothing but the best of luck and success with the Rangers. Uh, with that being said, I'll uh, take any questions you may have. Uh, Doug, uh, what do you uh, like about this player and uh, how do you see him fitting in? Well, he's got good size at 6'3". He uh, uh, can play, he's a left shot, can play the right side. Uh, you know, he's scored in the league recently. Uh, he's 26 years old, uh, a player that uh, obviously we control for a year and would like to sign long term. Uh, the right age group for our for us, what we're trying to accomplish. And I think he'll help a very good penalty killer too, very underrated penalty killer. So he's going to touch all aspects of our game and he's at a, at a good age. And, uh, you know, f as we continue to retool this roster, I think he's a good piece for us. Hey Doug, uh, Chris Drury and the Rangers have a glut of wingers. Also, they've got to sign some guys, so there wasn't going to be enough money. Can you give us some little background on your interest and how it developed? Uh, just calling around to managers, trying to find out what each team is looking to do. And uh, Chris and I got on a, an avenue that was beneficial for both of us. So we just talked it out and made a deal. Doug, does, uh, does he play uh, much or any power play? Uh, he can play the power play. Uh, I think, as I said, he's 26. He's just entering into, into all different areas of the game. Um, I think he's going to, he's a definite top six forward. You look at the minutes that he averaged last year where he finished on the scoring on the Rangers. And uh, I, I think he's just starting to come into his own. So I think he'll touch every aspect of our, of our game. Or have the opportunity. Oh, sorry, Army. Uh, you mentioned that he plays the right side. Obviously you have the versatility with uh, Perron and perhaps Cairo to play the left side. Is there any thought to putting him on the left side or does he slot in certainly on the right? I think I have to let Craig and uh, uh, I think it's going to come to synergy with different players. Uh, I think the league, as you find now, there's more guys playing their offside, their regular side. It's not as structured. It was maybe uh, a decade ago. So I, th I think we we've had uh, multiple players that play the right and the left uh, regardless of their shot. So I think it's, it's just a comfort level more, I think with, with the centerman and the other and your other line mate than it is the actual position. I think the wingers can play both sides. And obviously we've seen, we've had center and that can slide to the wing. So it's just getting, trying to accumulate good players that can fit into our group. Doug, you also want to bring good people in and by, you know, talking to, to people today about Buchnevich, uh, David Quinn called him uh, Captain Happy. He's just got this infectious smile and, and personality. How, how much did that play a role in, in you being excited about the player? Yeah, I think that, you know, we did our, Kevin McDonald, I want to give a lot of credit to uh, he, he lives in that area and has been on the Rangers for a long time and, and had really positive reports. Uh, you know, I think we can all go to games or we will, <laughs> we will be able to go to games in the future here real soon, but you can watch video. I've seen him play obviously live in the past, but Kevin did a great job of, of uh, using his contacts to find out that what type of uh, teammate he is and player and person that he is. And I think that's very important uh, uh, to, to bring someone that, uh, has those qualities into our locker room and uh, it, it's nice to check that off. Doug, with the flat cap being the way it is right now, uh, did you just see an opportunity and you feel like these opportunities are going to exist, especially this year where you're going to be able to maybe go out and get an impact player like this? Uh, every year there's opportunities uh, uh, at different times with, with a flat cap or without a flat cap that teams are going in certain directions. Uh, you know, there's a future in what, what contracts you have coming up. Uh, so I, I think obviously we've seen a lot of activity today in the NHL of, of teams, uh, you know, acquiring draft picks going into what would be considered a, a rebuild mode and uh, teams that are want to, want to stay competitive and want to uh, keep pushing forward uh, are, are acquiring players. So it's a, uh, I think it's always, there's always different opportunities and uh, the flat cap certainly brings more people in, but I think these deals are there year in, year out. Army, how, if at all, does this affect the Blues 
with uh, specifically Schwartz and Hoffman, your, your unrestricted free agent top six guys? Uh, well, we'd certainly like to stay in contact with those guys, but as uh, in a flat cap, every dollar is, is, is allocated. Uh, and we have a, an understanding of, of what an arbitration case might look like uh, for Pavel. And hopefully we get a longer term deal done. And that's obviously going to increase that number, not decrease that number. So uh, it, it does affect it for sure. There's, there's no, there's no getting around it that in, in a, in a, a cap system and a flat cap system uh, there's there's only so much money uh to be allocated and once it's spent it's spent army I know but are you are you pretty confident that you can uh, you can get something a multi-year done with uh with this guy i have no idea where our, our hope is to uh i've worked with todd diamond on a, a number of contracts in the past uh I, I enjoy working with todd he's a straight shooter and uh we've been able to do some deals uh in the past and we hope to that that's the goal going in uh, is to see if we can get something done uh now or in the future on a long-term deal at 26 years old he's he's a player that that is at a very good age yeah i was going to say that army uh, he's been a good player for a few years but he added the pk to his game and people are saying he's become all more all-around player in the last year or so you feel like you're just catching him at the right time here yeah i i think that you know uh, my more experience I get every year, you know, sometimes you, we, we put a lot of pressure on these guys at 18, 19, 20, and then maybe, especially when they come into the league young, JR, you, you seem to, to move quickly on them. I, I go back to when I started out in the, in the nineties, uh, the European players wouldn't come over until 22, 23, 24. They play, they play at their, their club teams, then they play on their national team, then they come over. And, and now with the North American players, they've been three years in the league and teams are already moving on from them. So I, I think 25, 26 is really at, at, at a very good age. And that, that you know, when you're, when you're moving players, in, in, and we've done that in the past, in that age, there is a little, uh, you're a little apprehensive because you know they're just coming into their own. And when you gain players from other organizations, you're, you're hope that there, there's still another level to go to. Doug, you used the term retooling. I mean, with this trade, with the UFAs you have, with the potential for a Tarasenko trade, is next year's team going to look significantly different? Uh, it certainly has that opportunity to look different, but I, I don't think that's that surprising. We had very little turnover here uh, in our core group for the better part of a decade. And uh, now now there is some turnover and we're, we're looking forward to turning you know, we're obviously turning it over to a different group of people and uh, you wish everything lasts forever and, uh, but it doesn't. And so, yeah, it, it does look like there, there, there is turnover uh, now and probably in the foreseeable future. I mean, I'm sure you'll play along with this one. Um, you know, I know you've said in the past that you want both sides, both teams to benefit from a trade and, and work out for both teams, but the reaction from this trade is, well, Army won another one just does it make you make you blush a little bit, or what do you think about when you hear people say Army won another one? I read the same comments yesterday, so I don't get too caught up in it. I read the other side of it yesterday, so it's uh, uh, some days they're happy with you, and some days they're not. Doug, in terms of uh, Sammy Blaze time here, uh, do you think that the injuries really maybe uh, uh, hurt him or prevented him from maybe uh, reaching his potential? Yeah, I think that. At different times when he was just getting going, uh, he was hit with the injury bug, and that's uh, it's unfortunate. We've had uh, other players in the, in the same that's happened to in the past, and uh, I think Sammy's going to be a really good player. I think that there's there's more there, uh, and we quite honestly, I was if this trade didn't happen, I was expecting more from him. I was expecting the eight minutes to go up. I was expecting the point total to go up. Uh, I think the Rangers. I don't want to speak for them, but I assume they they believe that that he has a different gear and he's getting into that age group that we're talking about where you can really take a step. So uh, Sammy brought an edge to our team. He played with passion. Uh, he was one of the, I want to say this in, 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 a, in, a, in a, the way I mean it is in a, in a positive way. He was a, a aggressive player that that sought out contact in a league that doesn't have a lot of that anymore. And that was a valuable asset to us and, and to him. And I think that 
once he gets to New York, uh, he's just going to be able to use that to to gain gain the coach's confidence and gain ice time. All right, guys, I'll let you run again. Thank you very much for jumping on back-to-back uh, -back days. Uh, stay tuned. You never know what will happen tonight. So we'll, uh, we'll talk to everybody later.